Hi, how are you? Juana Martinez Neal, author and illustrator. This is a video uh, for the Global Read Aloud. This is video number two, week three, video two. And this answers to your questions about La Princesa and the Thief, written by Susan Benito Elja, illustrated by me, winner of the 2018 Pura Belpre Medal for Illustration. Uh, the first question comes from Miss Newman's first graders. Uh, why did you choose to include lots of guinea pigs in the pictures? We in Peru know a lot about cuis. Cuis is how we call guinea pigs in Peru. And I had to include them. I mean, if you want to honestly, truthfully do something about represent the, the um, Peru, you have to, the mountains of Peru, you have to include cuis. So I had to include them. There was no doubt about it. Next question is, how did you draw all the mattresses stacked up in different colors? Okay, did I, I drew them when I sketched them? It was just a matter of putting them all one on top of the other and having, I, it took some time. I cannot, you know, that has, that's true. It took a while. Painting them took a lot longer because I had to take breaks because every mattress needed to look different to make it interesting to make it visually interesting to you the readers uh, how did you how did the cat always have the same feelings feelings as the queen and i have to say you know how sometimes they said that the owners and their pets look alike so in this case that's exactly what i was thinking when i when i did the cat and uh, la reina they are always synced they always feel the same way they know what the other one is thinking they're kind of like best friends they know they know each other so well then these questions come from uh, the second grade in New Hampshire from Miss Allen thank you for your questions the first question is why did you put a P in the story and I said that's how the story is that's that's what the manuscript uh, said and that's you know that's, that's why it's called the princess and the P so I didn't have much of a choice there. It was the story. Next question, why did you put different color mattresses in it? To make it interesting, to make it pretty to look at, interesting to look at. Why is there an Easter egg in this story? We call things that are on every page Easter eggs. Very good. Okay, so I put, I put those I don't know if they're actually Easter eggs, but I know that I put things for you to follow throughout the book. And that's guinea pigs, that's the rooster that is in the story, and that's the cat. So if you were to follow the story, just following either the rooster or like wrap the book and start from beginning to end and just follow what the guinea pigs are doing, or in the next time, just follow what the cat is doing on every spread. And I think it tells, it's like a sub story, it's a mini, mini book just following those three those uh, characters <clears throat> why is the cat the easter egg um and i think i don't know if it's an easter egg but i think it's more of an added an added detail and uh one more thing that happens in the story to make it more fun for the readers next question why did he move why did he not like the other princesses? Why did the prince did not like the other princesses? And I tell you that the prince did like the princesses. It was the mom, La Reina, who was always saying, no, 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 no. Uh, why did you decide to put pitchforks and rocks in the mattresses? And once again, that's something that I did not choose, that it was in the story. The author wrote it, and I included what the author said. These questions come from the kindergarteners in Miss Adams' class. Why does the cat hide under the bed? We like his glowing eyes. And I said, I had a cat. And he used, when we had people who were new, he would run under the bed and he would just hide until they were gone. So I think I was thinking about my cat when I did that. At the same time, that cat is a sneaky cat. So he's He's there because he's kind of like spying on the princess to see what she will do. I think she's the, the queen's spy. 
how did la princesa stay on top of that tall bed? And I cannot answer that question because I wonder the same thing. If I was in, on top of all those mattresses, I think I wouldn't move because I would be afraid of falling. Um, it didn't seem very, didn't seem very, it didn't look very comfortable. Now, uh, Miss, uh, let's see. Next question, how did you draw something so tiny like the key? It takes patience and it takes a lot of attention. So you have to be very, very, you have to be really concentrated when you're drawing something so tiny. That way it can look, it can look right. You have to be very aware of what you're doing. If I get distracted, I may ruin it. So I have to be paying a lot of attention. Now, we have Miss Robles' students. It says, so they live near a town, and, and this is for, I suppose, La Reina and El Principe, the Queen and the Prince. So they live near a town. They live in a village, and they live in a village called Luyok, which is in the mountains of Peru. It's a village with about, it was, I was inspired by Luyok, and Luyok is a, was a village, is growing, but was a village with only 220 families. I bet it's bigger now. Um, they, then they asked me, do they live near water? And I can tell you, yes, because we we know that, right? We need water to survive. So there's rivers um, around it, and they use those waters. Um, they need the water. They need the water for you know, surviving. So yes, they did near, live near water. Now we have the fifth graders in New York from the Willits Road School. What is your favorite book? And I have to say either The Little Prince or I have another favorite, which is Mafalda's comic strips. And I have, you know, I love Mafalda. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate illustrating and writing? And I say a 10. No, writing is, writing is probably a nine because it's very difficult. Uh, but illustrating is a 10. It's not, it comes easier to me because I do it more often, but I still love it. Both of them. How many versions of The Princess and the Pea did you read before illustrating this book? None. And I'm telling you, I grew up in Peru, so we didn't have this fairy tale. And I never knew about The Princess and the Pea until I read the manuscript. So I came to the book completely free of any ideas. Um, they came to me as I read it. As so I read that manuscript that I was illustrating. Uh, did you visit the mountains of Peru where La Princesa and the Pea takes place? Takes place. Yes. Again, this is in Wiyuk in Peru. First I went with my dad, uh, a really long time ago. Then I took my children and my husband in 2016. It's still beautiful. <laughs> it's growing a little, but it's still beautiful. It's a beautiful place. Why did you decide not to include the king in the illustrations? And you know what? There are all these different types of families. And in this story, I didn't think that it was needed. The story was about the queen and her son, and then this girl. So I didn't include the prince. Prince, the, I'm sorry, the king. I didn't think it was necessary. Why did you decide to make the queen look so grumpy? Is she based on someone real? And I say, yes, he's based, both the prince, the princess and the queen are based on someone real, and that's me. The prince, the princess is me when I'm happy, go lucky, and the queen, me when I'm grumpy. Do you have any siblings that are illustrators? No, I don't. My brother went to art school, and he does some sculpture, and then some, he does several things, but he's not an illustrator. What is your fav what is your favorite color and tool to illustrate with? My favorite color is yellow. And uh, my favorite tool to illustrate with is paper, pencil, and I love using my fingers to wrap the color, like smooth colors and make them all seamless. Um, now Ms. Olds at Carol Stream School, how did you get chosen to illustrate this book? They sent the manuscript to me. If I like it, I say, they think I'm a good match. If I like it, I said, yes, I'm going to work on it. And that's as simple as that. 
how did you make the time to work? I work eight to five. I try to work eight to five and I take a one hour break at lunch always. Um, and that's five days a week. So we just, I just make, a, make it a routine. It's, a, it's my schedule and that's how I work. That's how I make time for it. Do you like animals or have pets? Yes, I have two dogs. I have a super big dog called Puppy. <laughs> and I have a super tiny little dog called Kong, as for King Kong. Um, are you writing a new book? I My new book, Sonia, is coming out in March next year. Uh, so that's the one I just finished. Do you like writing or illustrating more? I like both. I like both. It's very different. Yeah, it's very different. I don't know if I, if I can choose one only. Now, second graders from Miss Breeze says, what is your favorite color? Yellow again. And what book are you reading right now? And I'm going to tell you, I love picture books. And because I love picture books, I'm going to show you some books that I love, that I read lately. One is Aphidia, a story about Aphidia, but Jen Sperry and Anna Cunha. Then this one, storybook written by Gil McClear and pictures by Rasheen Kirit. And then I Talk Like a River. I Talk Like a River by Jordan Scott and illustrated by Susan Smith. I love these books. So maybe they have them at the library and you can read them too. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for your questions. Take care. Have a good week. And I'll see you later this week. Bye. I forgot. I promised I was going to show you some of... So remember La Princesa? La Princesa is from Colca. From a Colca Kanye. And she's a Kawana. And this is a hat from a Kawana woman. You see how pretty those the embroidery is? And then she wears like that and then this is a little bag from here can you see how pretty the embroidery is and that's what La Princesa uses and then if you look at the queen she wears a montera which is this hat right here and it goes like this and that's what she wears and that's the shape and I thought that this shape like this was perfect for a crown. This one is not from Wijak, but it's the same shape. And then um, this will be the type of patterns and colors that they wear in Wijak. This is a hat. This is a baby's chuyo. You see? The baby will wear. And then this goes, this hand right here in front. Right here. And then on top, the boys will wear a hat like this. See? So this is Wijak. 